seventh grade math, test 28, problem number one, they gave us a uh, straight line that has one, two, three angles that make up that straight line. In other words, these angles together are supplementary, meaning together all three of them add up to 180. So we uh, take the measures that they gave us, 90, one they didn't give us, so we use the variable r, because they, they used r in the problem, and 52 they gave us. Together, or adding them together, equals 180. So we just solve this equation. We combine like terms, and then do the inverse operation. Subtract 142 to both sides, and we get 138. That's the missing angle. Uh, excuse me, 38. 38 degrees is the missing angle. So for number two, we're going to solve this equation. We're going to figure out what number goes here to make this side equal to 52. So in order to do that, I work farthest away from the variable first. If it says negative 4, just like I did up here, when I'm moving something to the other side, I do the opposite. But when it's already on the same side, I don't do opposite. I just add it the way it is. So this one's going to get moved because I want to get it just to where it says N. So I add 4 to both sides. And now I have to undo 8N. Well, that's 8 times N. The inverse operation of times is division. So I divide both sides by 8. And 56 divided by 8 is 7, so 7 is the number that goes there that makes this true, or the solution. Number 3 says, Marcus hikes at a rate of 2 miles per hour. If he hikes for 6 and 1 third hours, how many miles will he hike? Well, distance equals rate times time. Anytime they give me a distance problem, I just say that. Distance equals rate times time. I want to memorize that. And it, since it says per, they give me a rate here. Miles per hour, that's a rate or a speed. And obviously, hours is time. And they ask us to find miles, so they ask me to find distance. So what I have here is the R and the T. I don't have the D. I plug them into my formula. Distance equals 2 times 6 and 1 third. The way we multiply mixed numbers to whole numbers is just make everything into a fraction first. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 1 is 19 over 3. That's so 6 and 1 third is the same as 19 thirds. And of course, 2 is the same as 2 over 1. I need my factor trees and cross out my ones, but these are all prime numbers, so I just multiply. This answer is okay, but if you look and you don't see your answer written that way, then you can convert it by dividing in and out. Remember, your remainder goes up on top, so when I subtract these two, I get a remainder of two, and the divisor goes in on the, as the numerator. So two, 12 and 2 thirds is the same as 38 thirds, and that's the answer to this question, 12 and 2 thirds miles. For number four, they give us the height of a tower, and they say it's a scale drawing, which means the scale is going to be proportional to the real thing. So the scale is 2 centimeters to 19 meters. So every 2 centimeters equals 19 meters, and the drawing is 18 centimeters. So what I do is I just write a proportion since it's uh, proportional. I put centimeters on top, meters on the bottom. Over here, centimeters on top is how many meters? That's what's missing. So like we've been doing all year, we cross multiply and then divide to solve proportions. And I see that 171 meters is the actual height. Number five, they tell us that two angles are complementary, angle O and angle P. And complementary means when you add them up, it equals 90. So angle O they give us is 31.3. Angle P they didn't. So this is just an equation we're going to solve by isolating this to see what this is. So when again, when I move something, I do the inverse operation, right? So if it's positive 31.3, I subtract 31.3. Remember, line up your decimals, put a placeholder, and that's it. That's how you do that one. Angle P is 58.7 degrees. Now you can check these two by adding these two together to make sure you get 90. Number six, we're going to take a look at the diagram for number six. So number six says this. <coughs> They give us a diagram. They want us to find a supplementary angle to angle AOB. Well, angle A, I start with A, O, then I go to O, and B is right there. That's 90 degrees. So I need to make a straight line with that if it's supplementary. So the, other, the only angle that makes a straight line is this one right here. These two together make a straight line. So the angle BOD or DOB, that's the two ways you can say it. Just make sure the, the, the O is in the middle. There's a correct answer. Number seven, we're finding the area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is always one-half base times height, or another way to say that is base times height, and then divide that by two. 
and they give us the base and the height, so I simply have to multiply 10 times 11. And multiplying by 10 is simple. We just put a 0 after it, right? So 11 times 10 just means 11 with a 0, and then divide that by 2, and I get 55 square units. When we find the area for number 8, it's the same idea. It's still a triangle, but you have to be careful because they give you three measurements. Now, you cannot use that 3x because base and height must be perpendicular. So you're looking for that little box. So you're going to use the 6 and the x plus 2. So we can consider the 6 the height and the x plus 2 the base, not the 3x because that doesn't have that right angle symbol of the little box. So um, just like I did before, it's going to be base times height or x plus 2 times 6. x plus 2 times 6 looks like this. We put the 6 first and the x plus 2 second. And then, so there's base times height, right? Now divide that by 2. There's a couple ways we can do this. And I think the simplest way to not confuse you, because it gets a little hairy when we got plus and minuses there, what we can do as far as reducing. And I don't want you to get confused, okay? So I'm going to do it in a way that I think will confuse the least amount of you, which means I'm going to distribute first. So I'm going to go 6 times x is 6x, plus 6 times 2, which is 12. So I just simplified the top. Now, the way I divide, because there's a plus sign, now this is the part that's kind of new to you right here, because there's a plus sign, how, I, how do I divide that by 2? I just put them both over 2. I put 6x over 2 and 12x over 2, because we know that multiplication and division are related, and we know that when we're multiplying and there's a plus sign, we have to distribute, so it's like the distributor property. We have to do it to both, in other words. So, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 3x plus 6 units squared is the area for that triangle. Number 9, okay, so we had to find the perimeter for number 9. So all we did is we just added all these numbers up all the way. I got 4, 4, 8, 8, 6, 2, 6, 2, 12, 8. In other words, you should have what I have right here, okay? So of course, always pause the video and do this problem yourself. But make sure you have what I have. You add all those up and you should get 60 units. Now, this is not units squared because this is perimeter. It's linear. It's not little squares. It's just a straight line. Okay. Now, the next part is area. That's going to be square units. So what I did is I just chopped this up into different groups. I made a kind of a long, thin rectangle on the top and on the side, a thicker rectangle in the middle, a square in the middle, and then on the bottom, a, a longer rectangle. And when I did that, I just find the area of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different rectangles. I'm going to find those areas and just add those up. That's going to be the composite area for the whole thing. So let's go ahead and, and take a look on how we would do that. So for the first area, for the first section right there, section number 1, this is 4 by 8. You can clearly see that. So I multiply 4 by 8 is 32. Section 2 down here, again, that's a 4 by 8 also. So that's another 32 square units. Now this one right here, section 3. Okay. Now, there's no three units in there. I just broke it up into numbers of different sections. So don't think that there's three, a distance of three anywhere there. Now, I need to get this distance from here to here. It's not eight. It's eight minus this, which is four. So this is actually four, and this is the same. It's not six. It's only six to there. It's not six all the way across for this box. It's actually eight. See, I'm getting that from the top. So this box right here is actually six by eight. So that's where I get six times, uh, excuse me, uh, I said 6, I meant to say 8 by 4, right? Because it's 8 all the way, let me, let me correct what I, the mistake that I just said. It's 8 all the way up, but from here to here it's, all, it's 4, and I'm getting that here, which means from here to here it's 4 as well. So what's left, even though it looked, it's not drawn to scale, it doesn't look like it, this is only 4, and this is 8 all the way, it's not 6 because it's the same all the way across. That's why it's 8 by 4 for section 3. Now, for section 4, it's that little one. That's just a 2 by 2. I get the 2 from the drawing. This 2 over here, I have to figure out. Because it's 6 to here, 8 all the way. 8 take away that part. What's left is a 2. So I get that 2 by 2. And then section 5 down here, it's not 12, right? It's 12 take away that 4. So in other words, it's just the same 8. Oops, sorry. sorry. It's the same 8 down here. So this is 8 and this is 2. And I wrote that incorrectly, sorry. So that section 5 is an 8 by 2 section, which is 16 square units. And I just add all these up, and I get 116 units squared. For number 10, 
We have a large concrete block, cornerstone of a building, which is a rectangular prism shape. And the block is 13 by 11 by 16. We just simply multiply those three together. You should get 2,288 feet cubed. Number 11, Jeanette went on a hike. Uh, I'm sorry, Jerome. Sorry, Jerome. Jerome went on a hike, not Jeanette. He climbed three-fourths of a mile in two-thirds of an hour. What is the hiking speed? Again, distance equals rate times time. Now, rate is the same as speed. So anytime they talk about distance or rate or time or speed, we just use distance equals rate times time. We have to memorize that. We need that for almost every math class we take from, I don't know, fifth grade on, I think. Um, but anyways, distance equals rate times time. But this time it looks like they gave us, it looks time, uh, it says uh, he climbs three-fourths of a mile. That's a distance. Mile is a distance. It doesn't say miles per hour, so that's not a rate. It just says mile. That's a distance. And then it says two-thirds of an hour. Of an hour, not miles per hour, right? If they don't say per, it's not speed or rate. So they give us distance, and they give us time. They give us distance, and they give us time, and they say, what is the speed? In other words, find the rate. Find the R. If we're going to find R, just like we did with those equations earlier, we're going to isolate R. So let's just do that now. How do I isolate R? Make it just so it just says R. Well, if I divide both sides by T, then I see that rate is distance divided by time. If distance equals rate times time, rate is distance divided by time. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the distance that they give me, divide that by the time they give me. The distance they give me is 3 quarters of a mile. The time they give me is 2 thirds of an hour. How do I divide fractions? I multiply by reciprocal. I can do factor trees and cross out my ones and multiply to get 9 eighths. 9 eighths is a speed. can be converted. Remember we talked about this earlier. We divide in and out. Remainder goes up top, divisor goes on the bottom. One and one eighth what? Well, it was miles and it was hours. So if it's rate, we say miles per hour. Remember, rate or time has the word per in it or something similar to the word per. Twelve, we have a table that is proportional. So any of those coordinates that they give us will be proportional or equal to the others. So I'll just take one. I'll take one point. The first one they give me is x is 1. Y is 22.4. Get that from your table. Now, if I put Y over X, that's 22.1 over 1. Equals, and what they want us to find is this missing number right here. So this over this will equal this over this will equal this over this. They're all the same because that's what proportional means. So I'll put this, which I don't know, so I'll use the letter Y over this X. And that's where I get my proportion. As always, cross multiply and divide to solve proportions. And you found that missing value for this proportional table. Number 13, another proportional question. They say determine if these two are proportional. In other words, if I put these two equal to each other, is that true? And there's a couple ways you can check that, okay? What always works is if I cross multiply this times this, it should equal this times this if they're proportional. And I know that 8 times 18 cannot equal 12 times 10 because 12 times 10, if I'm multiplying by a 10, I'm going to put a 0 at the end. And I know this doesn't end with a 0 because 8 times 8, that's 64, right? So I, I don't even need to multiply that. I know they're not proportional. 14, it says 45 is 26% of what number? We're going to use the percent proportion. The percent proportion goes is over of equals percent over 100. They should be proportional. And they say 45 is, that's why 45 goes on top. Remember, is over of. Cross multiply and divide. And I get about 173.08 hundredths. So we're rounding to the nearest hundredths per the directions. Number 15. It says the factory produces 42,000 computer monitors per day. That's the total. The manager of a factory claims that fewer than 660 defective computer monitors are produced each day. In a random sample, 240 computer monitors, there are two defective. So here is our ratio, 2 per 240. So we're going to see if what the manager said, 660, fewer than 660 defective per day, is true or not. So this is what, there's a couple ways you can do this. The rate for this is if it's 2 for 240, I can reduce that fraction to 1 to 220, right? I can divide a 2 out from both. I don't have to. That just makes it easier if I reduce the fraction, okay?
So here's my rate. If that's true, then that means out of 42,000, there's going to be 350 defective, which is definitely fewer than 660. Now, I might have lost you there, so let me explain that another way. Okay, let's show you another way you can do that. You can write a proportion. Don't even need to reduce like I did earlier. Instead, and what I did earlier is I got the rate and I multiplied it by 4,200, but I know not, uh, not all of you understand that. So let's explain it another way. So what we can say is this. If there's 240 computers over or per two defective, that should be proportional equal to 42,000 computers over how many defective. So I use my rate to write a proportion, just keep computers on top, defectives on the bottom, or flip it, just keep the same defective with defective, total with total. Cross multiply to see that to be proportional to this rate, out of 42,000 computers, 350 will be defective. And that is definitely less than what um, the person claimed, which is less than 660, because 350 is less than um, we're at 660. Okay. Alrighty. So that's how we do that. Number 16. Based on a sample survey, a company claims that 75% of their customers are satisfied with their products. Out of 1,176 customers, how many? would you predict to be satisfied? Well, if it's 75%, we're going to find 75% of 1,176. A couple ways to do that, but what we've been doing all year is just the percent proportion. We just used that a minute ago. We're going to do that again. Percent over 100 is over of. Cross multiply. Dividing by 100 is easy, right? Just move the decimal two times. So if it's 75% of 1,176, it should be 882 customers. Okay, so 17, if you roll a number Q 72 times, how many times will you expect to roll a 6? Well, the probability of rolling a 6 is 1 out of 6 because there's 1 6 out of 6 sides. Now, if you're going to do that 72 times, multiply that by 72. When we multiply fractions, we do our factor trees first, cross out our 1s, and our answer will already be simplified. It should be 12 times. Number 18, a coin is tossed and a single die is rolled. What is the probability that the coin shows heads and the die shows three or four? Well, the prob probability of rolling a heads is one half. The probability of three or four, where there's three or four, that's two options out of six. So two over six reduces to one third. So just multiply those two. When it's one probability and, the word A and D and, another one, you would think addition, right? But no. If you got to do one and then the other, you multiply the two probabilities to get your probability of that event, of both of those events happening. 19, we're going to subtract linear expressions. So I have this linear expression minus this one, and we learned in class that that means to distribute a negative, and I should have did my rule for subtraction there, sorry about that. I should have did add the opposite and distribute this negative one right here. Okay? And so I have... Um, a negative 4p and a negative 5. So what I'm going to, oh, I did it down here. So then what I'm going to do is go ahead and combine my like terms. These are on opposite teams. Since I did my rule for subtraction, I use teams. Opposite teams mean subtract. Negatives have more. Over here, opposite teams mean subtract. This time, positives have more. There's my answer. Same thing for 20. You do the rule for subtraction first. See how to do it here also? don't have to do it here, even though that's negative, because this is an addition problem. This is a subtraction problem. This is a subtraction problem. I only draw two sticks when it's a subtraction problem. That's when I do the rule for subtraction. I'm going to distribute this negative 1, because we distribute before combining like terms. Negative 1 times 5t is negative 5t. Negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. Now I can combine like terms. Same team, add. Same team, add. And that's it. I hope that helped.